back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, my name is Laura. I just like to talk about books. So today I am going to do my September wrap up. I had a much slower reading month than I have in the past. I still did read 11 books. For me, that's pretty, pretty small number, but there's nothing wrong with that. And I did read some pretty long ones. Um, so let's get into the video. The first book that I read this month was Big Girl by Mecca Jamila Sullivan. I think I talked about this in a previous vlog, but it is about a girl growing up in Harlem in the 1990s and she is big and it's about how her mother was always trying to get her to lose weight. Her grandma was really kind of cruel to her about her weight and her mom also struggled with weight and she was always like trying to diet together and stuff. Just not good stuff. And I did really like this. I gave it four stars. I didn't necessarily love how the ending wrapped up. I thought it kind of made the rest of the book almost like, why did I just spend 300 pages reading about this for this ending to happen? I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense to me. I just didn't really care for the ending, but I really did enjoy the way that the main character, Malaya, the way Malaya used like hip hop and rap music to like really find her voice. She was a big fan of Biggie Smalls and I really liked reading all about her, discovering her, who she really is throughout music and through that specific type of music um, earlier in the 90s. So this was a four star read for me, probably won't ever reread it, but I mean, it was a nice, it was a nice book. I did enjoy it. The next book I read was Always the First to Die by R.J. Jacobs. This is a thriller. It's set in the Florida Keys and I gave it three stars. I thought it was pretty good, but it was kind of just your basic thriller. It did use dual timelines, so it was fun to read about the main character back in the 90s and then one now. So basically a little synopsis. This woman, when she was a teenager, she went to like an open casting call for a horror film that was being shot in the Keys where she lived. And she ended up getting like an actual role in the production. And it was kind of one of these like cursed films. She, a lot of stuff kept going wrong and someone ended up dying on the set. So she never really like stayed in acting or anything, but she did marry the son of the director. So it's like several years later that they have a daughter together and she is 16, 17. And the year before, her husband disappeared out on a boat somewhere. He just never came home. So the daughter, she decides she wants to go down and see her grandfather for the summer, but the mom's not into that. They, he's a very like Hitchcock feel where he like to like torment his, his cast members and stuff like that. Definitely a weird kind of guy, but I feel like that was where the inspiration was from. So, so she goes down to go get her daughter from her grandfather's house where she had kind of like lied to her mom about going and then they get stuck in a hurricane and without power, it's like very spooky and she's kind of like facing some demons from her past as well. So, I mean, I thought it was fine. I gave it three stars. You know, it wasn't a new favorite or anything, but it was, it's, it's fine. If you're into, if you like thrillers and you like want to read something a little bit different, it's a good pick. The next book I read was Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult and Jennifer Finney Boylan. This is about a woman who leaves uh, her home in Massachusetts because her husband is abusive and they go up to where her parents owned a honey bee farm. And she's now the only one running the place, but she like loves taking care of the bees and making the honey and selling the products and everything. But she kind of sometimes gets nervous that her son, who is now a teenager, um, has violent tendencies like his father did. He is completely estranged from his father and he does not really part of his life at all. So then this new girl moves to town. Her name is Lily and her and Asher, the son, start dating. And they seem to be very compatible, very much in love. And this isn't a spoiler because it's literally part of the synopsis. Lily ends up dead and Asher becomes like the prime suspect. 
And that's all the synopsis I'm gonna give you. But this was easily one of my favorite books of the year. Absolutely incredible. The story writing was incredible. And this twist in the middle, you will never see it coming. I mean, Jodi Picoult is very talented at writing good twists, but that are also like very realistic. And that was, I mean, my jaw dropped. It's also, I mean, it's a long book, but I could not put it down. I highly, highly recommend this one. I gave it obviously five stars. It was brilliant and I very much hope that everyone will enjoy it as much as I did. The next book I read was She's Up To No Good by Sarah Goodman Confino. This I talked about, I think at length already. So I'm not gonna say too much about it, just that I really enjoyed it. This is the one that's about a woman who gets a divorce like sprung on her from her husband that she had no idea there was anything wrong with their relationship. And she ends up going on a road trip with her grandma up to her grandmother's hometown in Massachusetts, I think, Massachusetts. <laughs> and there she kind of finds out so much about her grandmother's life that she never knew and about this like epic love affair her grandmother had and it was so cute. I loved this. I definitely preferred the chapters in flashback to the present day, but this was such a good book and honestly, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I did give this four stars and at this point, I can't really remember exactly why I didn't give it five stars, but it was really, really cute. And I definitely think that people will, will enjoy reading it, so I recommend it. The next book that I read in September was Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I mostly listened to the audiobook for this one, but I did get this copy that I love. I think I did show it in a previous video that um, this is the UK edition. I When I was over in the UK on vacation, I was lucky enough to grab a copy because I really prefer this cover. And it's also paperback, which I, I will forever be jealous of Europeans who get paperback copies at the same time as the hardcovers because I just vastly prefer a paperback but that's not important at all right now. This book is about a boy named Charlie <laughs> and he ends up kind of like becoming unlikely friends with this old man who's kind of grumpy and his old dog but he falls in love with the dog <laughs> basically and his neighbor basically tells him about this like other world that exists a portal in their backyard and so it kind of goes from there I definitely don't want to go into too much detail because I think this one would be better left just experienced I I will read anything Stephen King writes so like I was ready I don't even think I looked at a synopsis before it definitely veers more towards fantasy than anything else but like if I if I could like it you don't have to like fantasy to read this because I never ever read fantasy this was so good. It's not a new favorite, but it got five stars for me. I mean, truly, Stephen King can do no wrong in my eyes. If he wrote a shampoo bottle label, I would read it. Basically, pick this up if you have any interest in Stephen King because it's like his classic type of writing and storytelling, but in a different sort of way. And it was pretty accessible, even though this is like a, well over 400 pages it really did go by pretty fast I think the audiobook was like 19 hours but it went by super fast so definitely recommend this one if you are a Stephen King fan the next book that I read was The House Party by Rita Cameron this was amazing so it's about some kids who basically go trash this house that's being built in their city like it's a little town um, outside of Philadelphia and they just go have a party and this house is destroyed they've thrown like a toilet out the window they've like spray painted on all the walls like they left the water running so there's like a hole in the ceiling it is just a, an absolute mess and this woman is trying to have a baby with her husband and like they're not having any luck getting pregnant so this house was sort of like a distraction of sorts and then they because they both lived in worked in New York City and they were just gonna commute to this town outside Philly and then this happens so not good 
All of the kids involved, except for a couple, are pretty wealthy with really connected parents. But they all end up really going to a public school because the school district is so good. And so they're all friends. So obviously the people who end up getting most of the blame are this kid whose parents are farmers and he works on the farm and his older brother who is like 21 and has always like supplied the beer for parties and stuff. You do get a lot of perspectives and it, but it doesn't ever get confusing or feel like there's too, too many points of view. It really is a great social commentary on just how wealth and status in society can really affect like how you're treated by everyone. And like in this case, like they really want to put blame on the kids that have less money. So it was a really good read. It also takes place during um, the very beginning of the housing crisis, the recession in 2007, 2008. So that was really an interesting like spin to set it then because, you know, this woman is trying, is like just built this house and then it's destroyed and like the market's crazy and yeah. It was really good. Definitely not like a thriller like I thought it was going to be, but, and I mean, the cover kind of, you know, makes it look like a thriller, but I really did enjoy it a lot. I definitely recommend. The next book I read was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Now this one has been everywhere. Everyone's talking about it, so I'm not gonna say too much. Um, if you don't know, Jeanette McCurdy is an actress turned writer, and she was on iCarly on Nickelodeon, and she's been in like a few other things. Again, I, I'm a little too old to know all the ins and outs, but I really, really liked this. It was a hard read, but she is a very good writer. Her mom was abusive to her in many ways. Her mom was manipulative and just absolutely awful to her. And once she's now grown her mother had breast cancer and passed away and it's kind of like about how she has healed from that and how she you know feels disloyal but at the end of the day she's glad that her mom died it was fantastic it was i listened to the audiobook and it was really great she narrated it and yeah i just i really enjoyed it i think people would like this and it's it's pretty pretty moving and difficult to read but very, very important, very good book. The next book that I read was Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer. If you watched my whole Twilight video, then you know how I feel about this. Honestly, I think it was the best of all the Twilight books. I liked that it just tied things up nicely. I still cannot get over the name Renezme and just Jacob being awful and so much more but if you want to know my thoughts on that go check out my twilight video because that will give you all of my full and uncensored thoughts um i gave breaking dawn three stars because i gave every other book two and i feel like this one was just a little bit better so i know i'm handing out stars like candy today the next book i read was remarkably bright creatures by shelby van pelt this book was fantastic if you read The House in the Cerulean Sea or The Gunkel, I definitely think they're comparable in the way that they're just like feel good, warm, fuzzy books. This one is about a woman who works as a, a custodian night cleaner at an aquarium in Washington state. And she ends up sort of making friends with this giant octopus named Marcellus. And we do get his thoughts too, so that's pretty cool. But we just learn a lot about her life and what how she ended up like becoming a cleaner and then we start to get this story completely feeling like it's got nothing to do with it from this kid who is trying to figure out who his dad is and basically make him pay for the many many years of child support that he didn't pay because he's kind of down on his luck and could definitely use the money and so it kind of turns into like these two stories intertwining and it was just a beautiful, beautiful story. I mean, I laughed, I didn't cry, but I got emotional. I listened to the audio, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed the narration. Definitely one of my favorite books of the year. So five stars and must read. 
The next book I read was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I did talk about this in a whole vlog, but oh, so beautiful. Love, 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 love. This one has been out for like two years and it was so well loved. I don't think I need another description of it, but in, just in case, it's basically about a woman from the 1700s in France who runs away from the altar at her wedding to a man she does not love and ends up making a deal with the devil that she can live forever. The devil, without, without telling her this was part of the deal, says, okay, yeah, no, that's fine, and I'll have your soul when you die, but no one's ever gonna remember you. So if she has a conversation with someone and then they leave the room and they come back, they don't remember her. They're like, oh, hi, how are you? Like, nice to meet you. But then she finally meets someone in 2014 who remembers her. So it goes from there, and it was just, it was just beautiful. I, again, have a whole vlog about this, but it was beautiful and I loved it and it gets five million stars and I wish I hadn't waited so long to read it because it's probably one of my favorite books now. <laughs> the last and final book that I read in September is Misery by Stephen King. This is a classic. It's about a, a writer who gets in a car accident and gets rescued, sort of, by Annie Wilkes who is his number one fan, that's what she says. <laughs> but she is not right in the head <laughs> and just just chaos ensues and Paul, the writer, is uh, has his legs all broken and he can't get out of bed and he finds out some stuff about Annie that is just, you don't wanna be stuck with this person in a snowstorm. Classic, I, I it's a great book. Um, I loved it. Again, this was a reread for me. And I definitely noticed that I think I've like gotten weaker with horror books or something because I was like so grossed out and like horrified at some parts of this book that I remembered, but like I think I was anticipating them because I knew they were coming and I don't know, maybe that just made it worse for me because I was like prepared for it, but it was, it was a mess. I mean, it's such a, it's a great story, but it is not for the faint of heart. That is for sure. But I mean, if you haven't read this and you're a Stephen King fan, you have to, it's a must read. I'm definitely planning on reading some more uh, Stephen King books that I've already read coming up. I just, I feel like I'm starting to want to revisit his work. I've read a lot of his books, but I've, the only one I've ever reread before Misery was 112263, which I've read many times because it's like my favorite book ever. But other than that, just this. So I really want to reread The Shining, maybe Doctor Sleep. So we'll see. Definitely want to get to that in this month, October. So there you have it. That is all 11 books that I have read in the month of September. I am almost finished with one more, but I don't know if I'm gonna finish it today, so I'm probably just gonna count it towards October. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys again soon. If you like this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up, and I will see you next time. Bye.